If you're watching this video, you probably already know and recognize that memorizing the notes of the fretboard is important. But it's interesting because lots of guitar players never memorize the fretboard. It's true. It's possible to be able to play beautiful songs and play guitar your entire life and have never memorized the fretboard. But the thing is, is you're making it a lot harder on yourself trying to express your own music and understand the things that you're playing if you don't have the notes of the fretboard memorized. It's really similar to living in a foreign country where they speak a completely different language and never learning that foreign language. I mean, of course it's possible. You can live there, but you're gonna make it a lot harder on yourself if you can't converse with the people there um, and you're probably going to miss out on a lot of opportunities if you don't actually speak the local language. Um, so it's kind of similar with the fretboard. We want to be able to memorize the notes of the fretboard so that ultimately we can make things a little easy on ourselves and we're not denying ourselves more opportunities for different sounds and different experiences that we can have with the guitar. Okay, so getting into it. Three reasons why memorizing the fretboard is super important. Reason number one is it's going to open up the fretboard to you. So if you're in a position right now where you're really only comfortable playing in one section of the fretboard, being able to get to those other parts that seem a little scary, a big first step is just knowing what the notes are. So for example, let's say that you have your C harmonic minor scale down in this position right here. You know that this is C harmonic minor because you find the third fret on the A string and you start there and then... And then you can play all your C harmonic minor stuff, right? Well, there's lots of other C notes on the guitar that we can build a harmonic minor scale on top of. You know, you're really comfortable right here, but we also have one right here. We also have one right here. We also have one right here. We also have one here. We also have one here. We have one right here. And then right here, we're an octave above where we started. So there's lots of different options of where to play this C harmonic minor scale. And yes, it takes a little bit of work to understand how to play those other scales in the other positions. But once you have it down, then you're no longer restricted to just playing your melodies here. You have all these other options to be able to play your melodies on. And it's not that you have to memorize like every, like be, you don't have to be, um, you don't have to have the same comfort in every single position, but even if you just learn three of them so that you can play some stuff here, you can play some stuff here, you can play some stuff here, at the very least you're covering distance, right? I mean, I like to be in a position where I do like to practice every position, um, but maybe I'm a little intense and you, like, you don't need to be as intense as me. I'm not telling you to be exactly like me, I'm just trying to let you know, hey, if you want a little bit more out of your guitar playing, if you want to express yourself with a little more confidence, here's some of the ways <laughs> to do that, is actually memorizing the notes of the fretboard. So that's the first reason, is that memorizing the notes of the fretboard is going to open up different parts of the fretboard to you. Reason number two is when you know the notes of the fretboard, you can better understand the things that you like to play. For example, let's say that you learn a shiny new chord, and let's say it's like G minor 11. If you, it's hard to see this on YouTube, we've got the third fret, third fret, third fret, and then the first fret on the B string, and I'm muting the A string. I'm also not playing the high E string. Right there, G minor 11, you're like, ooh, this chord is beautiful. I love this chord, right? Well, if we know the notes, then we can understand that in order to create this chord, we need a G note, an 
F note, a B flat note, and a C note. And it's like, okay. So next time I have a G minor chord, I can add that C note, and I can add that F note, and it's gonna give me that beautiful G minor 11 sound to deepen our understanding of what we're actually doing. You can do this with scales as well. Um, and this kind of leads us into the third part of why memorizing the fretboard, the notes of the fretboard is so important, is that it gives you intentionality to change the things that you do know how to play into something new and into something fun. Instead of just changing chords randomly, you can change chords with intention to experiment with new sounds. So what I'm saying here is let's say that you really like this G minor 11 chord so much, but you wanna be able to play it in different sections of the neck. So what you can do is you can take the next G minor seven chord that you know, let's say that you happen to know this one right here. And since I know the notes of my fretboard, I can see that this chord is missing the note C. And it has the note D, but we don't exactly need the note D. So we can take this D note and we can bring it down a whole step and make it a C note. And then now all of a sudden, we have another G minor 11 voicing. So now we have one here and now we have one here. So in that section of the song, you no longer have to just whatever you were doing, you can spice it up a little bit with. And even just that little move right there can really open things up, really make it a lot more exciting. Not only exciting to listen to, but exciting for you to play and for you to express yourself. And we could continue with this process. Find another G minor seven, find the D note, take that D note and make it a C note. Play the rest of the chord. There it is, <laughs> another G minor 11 voicing. So now we have one here, now we have one here, now we have one here. Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> that's really nice. And we can do this another time, right? So we have another one up here, take the D note, Make it a C note, right here. That one sounds a little funky. And sometimes that happens. Like not every option is gonna sound amazing, but the fact, that I may, the fact that I know the notes of the fretboard and I can find these options, at the very least, I can make a decision about whether or not I like that option or not, and if I wanna use it. But now, This is an octave above where we were. Oof, that's a tough chord to find. A little bit of a tongue twister for me. And then, and then. Uh, I'm trying to just one more time for fun. Nope. There we go. <laughs> So I know that maybe this is a little advanced, maybe it's difficult to follow in terms of playing the actual chords, but I want you to think about the principle. The principle is, is that if you know the notes and you know, if you know the notes of the fretboard and you know the note that you have to add to the thing to make it something new, then you can find that note and you can make it the new thing. And then now all of a sudden, your relationship with the guitar isn't just a bunch of shapes, like shapes of scales and shapes of chords, but your relationship with the guitar is you can take a shape, you understand what the notes mean inside of that shape, and then you can intentionally change those notes to make it a sound that you're really excited about. And that is so much of creativity and expressing ourselves on the guitar is taking the things that we know from other songs that we've learned from other teachers, changing it a little bit, 
making it our own, putting our personality on it, um, and making it new. I mean, that's why I love to play the guitar is because I want to express myself. I want to express the ideas that I have. And having that solid foundation of understanding the notes on the fretboard is a huge factor in how I'm able to do that. If I didn't know the notes of the fretboard, it would be super, super difficult. Just like if I was living in a foreign country and I didn't know the language, lots of things would be very difficult. Yes, you can play other people's songs. You can spend hours and hours by trial and error trying to figure out new things and new chord progressions. Or you could just learn the fundamentals and get to the point where you can express the sounds that you're hearing in your head much more quickly. So if you're watching this video, I mean, you're probably in a position where you want to get better with the guitar, you want to break out of the, the rut that you feel like you're in, and break out of the habits and the patterns that you feel like you're in. Memorizing the fretboard is a great way to start doing that. And the three reasons that we went over in this video is that it's going to open up the fretboard to you so you can play in lots of different positions. It's going to help you understand the things that you know how to play and why you like them or why you don't like them. And it's also going to help you change and alter the things that you know how to play so that you can play new stuff new, fun, and exciting stuff. There's tons of other reasons to memorize the fretboard as well, um, but I hope those three reasons are kind of enough to give you a little bit of a nudge uh, to start doing the, the difficult work of memorizing the fretboard. I'm not gonna tell you that it's easy, but I will tell you that it's worth it. And if you'd like help memorizing the fretboard and understanding music theory, that's exactly what we do in my two-month guitar program. You can check out the main video pinned to this YouTube channel. Um, and I've got lots of other YouTube videos that you can enjoy, lots of videos on Instagram as well. So thanks for hanging out for this video, and I will see you in the next one.